marketing folks said, okay, why don't you do this? Why don't you Google fuck the movie uh, right now and see what pops up? <laughs> so if you want people to find your movie on the interwebs, we might have to reconsider. Going, we don't need Rose. Mr. Wright, an honor to see you again, sir. Thank you for your time. This is one of the best performances I've seen from anyone in years. So seriously, it's a real honor. Oh, thank you, Jake. Good to see you again. I'm going to jump into this. Uh, I, I want to start out talking about the moment where Monk is told that his books aren't black enough. I am sort of curious as an actor, what has been the worst note or piece of advice you've ever been given by someone over the course of your career? The worst piece of advice... Jeez, ah, man, I think I hit delete, you know, in my brain on bad advice. I, don't, I can't recall somebody giving me any bad advice that I really heeded. I can tell you the best piece of advice I ever got. Though. I'll take it. That was from a woman named Lilia Scala. She had been nominated for an Academy Award uh, for Lilies in the Field opposite Sidney Poitier. I did a play with her. My, I got my equity card. First play with her. I did it twice, once in Washington, one in Boston with her. She said to me one day in rehearsal, she said she was Austrian. She was like the first certified female architect in Austria, as I understood it, but she'd come here and she'd become an actress. She was a fantastic woman. She said, Jeffrey, she said, you're good. She said, you can make it, but success will not drop out of the sky like a ripe apple. You must work. I'll never forget that. That I kind of just got chills that in was, that moment. That, that was the best piece. I can't remember that, the worst piece. I ignore those people. Well, no, you, you ignore the right people. Uh, I was reading, this is a ridiculous question. I was reading when, uh, that when Cord Jefferson initially sent out the script for this movie, the working title, before it was American Fiction, do you know what it was? Uh, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, I am sort of curious, how different would this press tour be if you were promoting the new movie, Fuck? Yeah, you know, it might, you know, it might be tricky. I think Cord said that, you know, the marketing folks said, okay, why don't you do this? Why don't you Google Fuck the movie uh, right now and see what pops up? <laughs> so if you want people to find your movie on the interwebs, we might have to reconsider. But yeah, that was the name of, that was the, name of the movie when we shot it. That was, that's what was on the slate, you know? As, as someone who obviously does research and homework uh, on my work computer and personal computer, I appreciate you guys keeping me from having to Google fuck the movie uh, to, to get ready for this one. Um, there is a, a quick moment in the film where Monk questions, maybe I should just go back to not selling books, uh, you know, where remaining true to himself means maybe just not being successful. I am sort of curious how often that is a choice you have to make in Hollywood. As an actor, how often is it? big successful movie box office or being the actor you want to be but not both? I mean, I've been fortunate in my career to be pretty flexible. It's the way I work. I like to, you know, create new characters. I like to try to... I, I was drawn to actors like Dustin Hoffman early on uh, who played, who shaped these characters anew from film to film. It just, it just kind of excited me. It made the work interesting for me. So it's allowed me to slot myself inside a lot of different stories, different genres. It's kept me busy. So, so, uh, so you, you were making a point about being in a you know, big blockbuster film or being in a smaller film. For me, I've managed to kind of balance between, you know, you know, kind of all sizes, you know, massive franchises, independent films. This is an independent film. This is like, you know, uh, you know, MGM came on board, you know, while we were in production. But when we started out, we were, you know, we were on our own out there. We shot this in 25 days, you know, at a clip, you know, with not a lot of resources. But, you know, the year before I was working on, on the Batman. I found value and, uh, and, and, and some real creative satisfaction in both of those things. So... You can do it so long as, you know, you, you, uh, you are tuned with the collaborators, the, the tone and the intention of the pieces, you know, it, it, you know just because it's big doesn't, doesn't mean that it's not soulful. Uh, and, be, and just because it's a small independent film doesn't uh, mean that it's going to be good. So, I mean, it's really down to the nature of the script and the nature of the, the artist that you're working with. Um, 
you know, in Monk's case, he, uh, he, he just got caught out there, you know? He, uh, he and, but at the same time, I, I'm kind of protective of him because certain of the choices that he's making and the sacrifices that he's making creatively, personally, uh, professionally, he does on behalf of family. So it's not simply that he's cynical. It's not simply that he's, you know, spiteful. Yeah, he's that too a little bit, but primarily, He's a caretaker, and uh, you know that 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 adds some some more human layers to uh, to his in, his reasons, his intentions, and his journey. Yeah, the thing I love most about this movie is that the the concept of the film isn't just it's not a joke. It's he's brought here out of necessity and and desperation, for lack of a better word. And I think that's really that was my favorite part of the entire film. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I think so. I think there's there's what 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 was clear too on the page with this character and as we played him is yes he's a you know he's a bit of a curmudgeon and he's you know sharp elbowed and he's sarcastic you know and he's a little bit arrogant at times but at the same time too he's he's he's, he's there's a profound vulnerability uh, about this guy and somehow um, we we were able to kind of go on the journey with him because that because. Underneath it, there's, uh, you know, there's some real, uh, you know, there's some pain in the humor, you know, uh, really, really wonderful stuff to play. I, I appreciate always getting to go on the journey with you, sir. Uh, I, I don't think you ever get tired of making good movies because they, oh, you make my job easier uh, with performances and films like this. So I, I just want to say thank you for always fitting me into your schedule, sir. And it's always, uh, it, it's not lost on me to, to be able to spot, speak with you. So thank you for your time. And it's always great to talk to you, Jake. Thanks, man. Oh, we're going, we don't need roads.